Hello everyone, Joe Thatcher here with Midwest Military Equipment out of Washington, Missouri. Uh, we're down at our sold and for sale vehicle yard right now. Uh, this is actually a new yard that we just moved to. Uh, we acquired this building and this lot to give us some extra relief. As you can see, we've already started filling it up. All the trucks in this line here are currently for sale and listed on our website. Uh, those are some sold units over there. We've got some other equipment over there that needs to be gone through or is already listed. Uh, so just gave us a whole bunch of room here. This yard here is about five and a half acres. So gives us some room to grow and also gives us a great place to showcase some vehicles and uh, do some more videos like what we're going to do today. So what I'm going to go over today is we get a lot of requests and inquiries about, all right, so I'm looking at an LMTV, an MTV, or an FMTV. I'm looking for either an A0, which is just a straight 1078, 1088, 1083, so on and so forth, an A1, and an A1R. Uh, and then we also get a lot of inquiries. What is the difference in the airdrop cab versus the standard cab on the trucks? So what we're gonna do today is kind of, we've got a line up here of all the different models, along with all the different tire configurations, light configurations, hydraulic factory winches, all the accessories. Uh, and we're gonna go through step-by-step step and show you kind of some of the differences here. So this right here is an M1078, straight M1078. I refer to them as an A0 just for simplicity's sake. So this particular truck, as you can see, has got Goodyear MVT tires on it. So there's two different tires that came on the LMTVs from the factory. Um, they have the MVTs, and then they have the XMLs, which is a Michelin, uh, which we can show you the XMLs on a truck right over here. This A1 over here has the XMLs. So that is the XML tire. tire. Um, both, both very popular. Uh, the Goodyear seems to be more popular for guys doing the highway gear swaps, things like that. One of my favorite tires is actually the XZL. They started putting this on a lot of the MRAPs and a lot of the P2 trucks. Um, and these tires perform very, very well. So this is just a little bit newer style of tread, less aggressive than the XML. Uh, that is the XZL. So starting off with this truck, uh, the Stewart Stevenson A0 trucks were built between 1993 and 1998, late 98, early 99. Um, after that, from 99 to 2004, early 2004, they had some 2004 trucks were A1Rs, some were not. It was a carryover year where there were some differences in it. The A0 trucks, uh, they have a 3116 cat turbocharged engine. It's a fully mechanical engine. There's no electronics, no ECM, nothing of that nature. Uh, the transmission through all of the model numbers, whether it's 4x4 or 6x6, uh, A1, A1R, A1R, P2, the transmission all stays the same. So the base transmission is an MD 3070 PT automatic transmission. It's a 7-speed automatic Allison transmission, uh, and it has an attached transfer case. Um, with this transmission, there is different transmission touch pads. So there is a what is called a WTEC 2 and a WTEC 3. You'll notice in some of the trucks when you get in on the driver's side, when you're sitting in the operator's seat, uh, to the left-hand side you will see the transmission touch pad that you actually put the vehicle in forward and reverse neutral drive. Um, the WTEC-2s is a very thick touch pad. The WTEC-3s is a much thinner, flusher touch pad. So that's one of the differences to be able to tell on your truck uh, if it's got a WTEC-2 or a WTEC-3. Something about this truck is it's actually got, even though this is an A0 truck, this has got the newer style LED lights. So there's two different, actually there's a bunch of different light configurations that you'll see on the Stuart Stevenson vehicles. As you can see that truck there, that's actually just a straight 1079, it has the original incandescent lights. Um, so you have those standard incandescent lights and then truck light, which is the current manufacturer for the military. Uh, this is the newest generation LED right, right here. And then the first generation truck light LED light is that one there. These are round. These are probably one of the most popular LED lights, but you're seeing a lot of newer trucks or trucks that went through an overhaul program, like more than likely this one does, uh, has the newer uh, new style lights on it. Um, all of the majority of the A0 trucks that you're going to find out there did not have LED lights on them. They did not start putting LED lights on them until the A1s and the A1Rs. Um, this particular truck probably went through an overhaul program. That's why it's got the upgraded LED turn signal lights. The LED lights are the same. That's one thing that's really nice about military vehicles is all the lighting is the same. So um, LEDs, all made by truck light, they are all a 10 through 32 volt. So 
whether you're putting these on a Stuart Stevenson that has a 12 volt lighting, or lighting uh, power or you're putting it on a deuce and a half or a 900 series truck that are 24 volt or even a Humvee that's 24 volt, the lights are all the same. They all plug in the same, they all mount the same. Uh, like the front turn signal lights and the rear tail lights, they all mount with a three quarter or three eighths by three quarter inch long bolt. These are all M10 bolts that mount these. So versatility, that's one thing the military did very well is, you know, all their lights on all their vehicles are all the same. Headlights are the same. Um, the headlights that we offer, we offer truck light OEM. We also offer a headlight that we manufacture. Uh, that headlights are all, the LEDs are all 10 through 32 volt as well. So if you're wanting to put those in a different vehicle besides for a military vehicle even, like a Jeep, as long as it's a seven inch round bucket, it's gonna fit in the truck. Um, the biggest thing about, uh, we get a lot of calls, hey, I'm looking at these lights on the internet, they're just a Jeep headlight. The, you know, the Jeep headlights, sadly, they're normally what's called an H4 uh, pigtail on them. So those do not have the correct military Packard pigtail connectors that's required to plug into the headlight without cutting and splicing. All of our headlights we sell, we offer the correct pigtails on them so that way they're able to plug and play. Uh, we also, if you do end up with a set of H4, H11 headlights, we do offer adapters that go to the Packard connector as well. So getting back to the basics of the vehicle though, overall everything's pretty much the same. Cab Air Ride on the A0 trucks is located right here, uh, which we offer an upgraded kit for that. Um, the A1Rs, as you can see this one right here, there's no longer a Cab Air Ride system. Cab lift system is the same. Uh, however, the, there is no cab air ride. What they've done is they've upgraded the front suspension on the A1Rs. So the A1Rs have this, it's a double coil over front shock versus if you look at the A0 here and earlier A1s, they do not have that shock. So what the military's concept was is, you know, it's less, less things to potentially go wrong. The shock was a simpler product, so they put the shocks on these. Uh, quite honestly, driving either or, I do not see personally much ride difference at all between the two. You would think, oh, with that shock, this thing should ride a lot better. It's about the exact same. Axle-wise, everything is the same, no matter it be a A0, A1, A1R, or an A1R P2. Uh, standard axle configuration, these are RF611 Meritor axles. They're a planetary type axle. They're two to one at the hub. Um, so there is a planetary set in each one of these hubs. We do offer a high-speed gear option for these. So what that does is we change out the ring and pinion and the differential, and we make it a uh, 307 gear ratio. That takes your top speed from roughly 58 miles an hour to about 70 to 72 miles an hour. It cuts your RPMs down. That's the biggest thing for fuel economy and spending a lot of time driving on the interstate. High-speed gears are probably our number one thing that we sell the most of. Um, it seems like almost every truck that's been coming out of here that's been ordered, we've been putting highway gears in it for customers. Um, cab lift system for A0, A1R, that's all the, pretty much the same. There's different control panels on this A1R here. They've updated the control panel. As you can see, this one does have the cab hydraulic pump, but it does not have, the, uh, as the A0 does, a cab inflation because it does not have cab airbags. But other than that, the knobs, the valving, all that's pretty much the same. The cab pumps are the same. Uh, the only time that you see the cab pumps change is when you get into the P2 trucks, which we'll show you that. That's electric over hydraulic. Um, the manual cab pump is the same on an A0, A1, A1R, so there's really no differences there. Um, this particular truck that we're showing you here is an A1R. Um, starting here at the door, the upgraded door handles. So this one has got a paddle type handle versus this one is a pull up. One thing that you'll notice going to these pull up, we get this inquiry a lot. So this handle, passenger to driver side, is pretty much identical besides for the rod orientation and the latch orientation. What you will see is some A1 trucks actually have this handle reversed. So if you've got a pull down handle, it is the same handle, it is the same guts. The only thing that is different is you have left side components on your right hand side of the truck or you have right side components on the left hand side of your truck. Really, literally all they did was reverse the handle and swap all the hardware. So for example, if this was a pull down right now, um, I could take this handle out and put it onto the other side and it would be a pull up on the right hand side. So a pull down left hand is a pull down right hand, which this truck right over here, as you can see, is set up that way. So just showing you that handle there, you can see the lock box is turned upside down. <laughs> so 
and then the handle is also upside down. So if I were to take these guts out, I could take this guts out of this passenger side door right here, and I could go over to the driver's side door and reverse everything, and this handle would function just as fine. So that's something that's important I wanted to call out on because we get a lot of requests when people order handles. They're like, oh, well, my handles look like that, but they pull down. So if you've got a truck that the handles pull down, you're going to need the opposite side of how we listed on our website because originally they were designed to pull up. Um, so that's just kind of some good information there. This truck, since we're over here, uh, this is actually a 1078 A1. So we've got A1R, A0, A1. This truck here, I believe, is a 2004. So this is right before they changed to the A1R model trucks. Uh, this truck actually has a hydraulic winch. So the hydraulic winch on the A1R, the A0, and the A1 are all the same. This is a 17,000 pound DP manufacturing winch. Um, this winch is very neat because it's actually a forward and reversible winch. So this winch, this on this configuration of this truck, has a fair lead that runs to the rear of the vehicle. For if you were to drive into something and need to winch yourself out backwards, you're able to do so. And then on the front of the vehicle, it has a fair lead as well for pulling from the front, just as a standard winch would be. You can see that's actually how we've got this cable run out right now. And with that. Uh, another important thing to touch on about the winches is a lot of people are talking about extended range in their vehicle or being able to add more fuel capacity. Well, if you look at the factory tank on either an A0, A1, doesn't matter, any year model of Stuart and Stevenson truck or BAE truck, uh, as you can see, the fuel tank is actually recessed there. And a lot of people ask when you don't have a truck with a winch on it, well, that seems like you're losing a lot of potential capacity. Well, it is. Um, but what that is designed so that way they could have the same fuel tank uh, whether it be a winch truck or not. So I could take this tr a fuel tank right here, put it on a non-winch truck, or I could even put it on a winch truck, or put a winch on a non-winch truck and not have to change or modify that. The frames are the same, everything like that is all the same. Uh, these are a hydraulic driven winch, so we'll go over here to the other side. So they have a driver's side mounted PTO. Uh, I would crawl underneath the truck and show you, but We've got diagrams of the TM that'll show you where the PTO mounts if you're really concerned about that. It's directly behind this reservoir. Uh, this is a hydraulic oil reservoir. So a lot of layman's terms, it's a wet kit. So what happens is you've got a PTO operation switch inside the cab that turns the PTO on. It draws fluid, the pump draws fluid out of the reservoir over to the winch. And then you've got a reversing solenoid on the winch that actually takes the winch forward or backwards, which is in and out. Um, so that's a lot of people are looking at these hydraulic kits and the PTO for if you wanted to take the bed off and put a feeder bed or a logging bed, you know, the, the only thing that you might potentially have to change is your pump output because the pump is a uh, low volume pump designed for just specifically that winch, but it can be done. Uh, PTO revisions, if you wanted to add a PTO to a truck, it's about $1,600 for the parts for the PTO and that's no reservoir, nothing else. So. If you've got a truck that does not have a PTO on it, you're like, man, I want to add a PTO and potentially a reservoir. We do sell all those components to be able to do so. Um, so that's just kind of another interesting thing. We'll walk over to the back of these trucks and be able to talk about the hitches on the truck itself. So as you can see here, the A1s and the A0s have this standard hitch. Um, all of the, whether it's a 1078, a 1088, a 1085, all the same. Um, if you go over to the A1R, this is actually a slide out hitch. So this hitch will actually slide out. It'll extend out about a foot. It's got a pin in the bottom of it. You can pull it out. And what the design behind this was is on shorter neck trailers, you're able to get that tongue of the trailer further away from the body. So when you're off road, uh, it still allows you full articulation of the hitch. These hitches do articulate as do the A0 and the A1 hitches. Uh, but what it does is it gets that a foot out. So if you get, if you got a shorter tongue trailer and you're off-road and you're making a tight turn, it's not gonna get into the corner of either the box or the bed. So that's a nice little design feature that they upgraded on those. Overall, back of the truck's pretty much the exact same on all of them. Um, you know, the semis, we could walk down to the semi and I'll show you on a semi here. The only thing that's different on a semi configuration is the frame rails. So the frame rails are tapered on a road tractor for your fifth wheel ramp slides. Um, so that if you notice the rear hitch configuration is a little bit different. The pinnel is the same. The lights cluster is the same. 
Um, you still do have a 24 and a 12 volt receptacle, but as you can see, these frame rails are notched and you do not have long sills on the bed. So good shot here. This is another A1R. You can see from left to right, the differences in the hitching and the frame rail. Uh, being that this is a A1R airdrop truck, uh, another thing that's different about this is we were just looking at that A0 truck, it has the lights down here. On the A1R trucks, the lights are actually recessed into the bed. As you can see there, the mud flaps are different. Um, and we'll go, we'll hop up in the interior of this one and kind of go over that. While on my way, I just thought of something else that was a good option here on this other side. So being that this is, uh, in 2004, the military started putting battery disconnect switches on trucks. So this truck here is a 2009, but that 04 over there has it. So this is a battery disconnect switch. So you've got a battery on and off underneath right there. That's an accessory that they started adding on the later model trucks. We'll hop into the cab on this one. So this particular truck that we're getting into right now, this is an M1081A1R. So this particular truck is a 2009 model. Uh, it is an airdrop truck, as you can see by the hinges on the door frames here, which the airdrop trucks, A1, A1R, A0, all the cabs are all pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing that changes majorly on the A1R trucks is if you look at the instrument panel, the instrument panel is all black, all the gauges are black. Um, it's got an updated indicator light, the gauges are a different module, this actually are made by Medallion Instruments instead of Kaiser like the older uh, A1 and A0 trucks were. Uh, just some updated vendors, the touch pads are slightly different on these as well. Um, the A1R has a C7 cat engine. Uh, versus the A1 only has a 3126. Both of the engines are equipped with an exhaust brake, which is a very nice feature for towing. Uh, the 3116s sadly do not have an exhaust brake since they are a mechanical engine. Um, you know, the C7, quite honestly, in my opinion, they're, they're, a, they're a powerhouse. You put highway gears in a C7 truck or even a 3126 truck, they are an absolute blast to drive. Not saying that the 3116s aren't, it's just you're talking about a 200. 40 to 250 horse configuration to a 290 horse configuration to the C7, which is a 310 to 330 horse configuration. A nice thing about the C7 and 3126 as well is you're able to add cruise control to those. So a lot of people that are turning these into expedition vehicles that are wanting to take them out and enjoy them and spend more time on the highway in them, being able to add that cruise control on an A1 truck is very nice. But there's a lot of diehard people out there, and I myself am kind of one of them. You know, the mechanical engines, for simplicity's sake, parts availability, overall maintenance costs, the mechanical engines are cheaper. But, you know, with sacrifice, you know, you get more bells and whistles with the electronic trucks, which is very nice. Uh, it's just some people like the older style, and I, I honestly can't blame them for that. While we're in the interior of this truck, one thing I wanted to show is this is actually a factory red dot air conditioning system in this truck. So this is a factory air kit. Uh, we installed a lot of these red dot kits. We've actually kind of stepped away from them just for parts availability and the overall cost of this unit. This unit here retails for, I think, about $2,600 just for that box. Um, we can still get all the parts to maintain them. However, for installing them into vehicles that did not have factory air conditioning, uh, it just has not been cost feasible anymore so we've developed a new system that actually goes right here in the center hump which we've showed it off in a few videos uh, very similar concept operation um, the push pull valve does not have to be changed out which is a, a very nice feature when installing air conditioning especially if you're going to do it yourself because we've got our kit coming out pretty soon where people can do it at home so um, another thing about the airdrop cab is it is a split window cab versus all the other trucks are a solid one-piece windshield. So you actually have two separate windshields here on the airdrop cab. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll walk over to the 1085A1 P2 and kind of show you the A1 P2. We'll touch on that and that'll probably be the gist of it for today. So this truck over here is actually a 2009. This is going to be the latest in civilian hands that you can get. The C7 engine, um, same MD3070 Allison 7-speed transmission. Um, as you notice, this cab is armored. So the cab configuration, this is actually an LTVAS cab. Um, the cab pump will be different on it. Just quite a few little things. Axles, driveline are the same. This is actually a 
A1 P2. Um, so this has got a 20 foot cargo bed on it. You can see something on the A1Rs too, another big differentiation, whether it's a newer A1R with an armored cab or a soft skin cab like this, or just a standard A1R, the front bumpers are different. If you look at the front bumpers, uh, the only thing that changes on the P2s, they went to an upgraded tow hook on them. Uh, this one's actually got the Michelin XZL tires on it, like we were talking about. And if you look, they've got the suspension, but the cab lift has changed on the P2. So they actually have dual rams on both sides to lift the cab up due to the added weight of the armor. And then these are hydraulic struts that the cab actually rides on now. Um, same battery disconnect switch. This has actually got um, aluminum, Hutchinson aluminum beadlock wheels on it. So the CTIS hoses, as you saw in those other trucks, are no longer there. This is The CTIS is integrated into the wheel face itself. And that is an all aluminum wheel versus those are steel wheels. Onto the interior of the truck. Uh, the instrument panel is very similar to the A1R that we were just in. Uh, the steering column does telescope in these newer trucks, which is a nice feature. And the seating configuration is just about the same, so. You can hear that door slam. You don't want to get your fingers in that one. So be sure to uh, like and subscribe our channel if you want to see more videos like this. We love hearing feedback from our, our viewers on, you know, what we can do different and what we can change. So please sure, be sure to make some comments in the uh, comment section below. And uh, if you're looking for a truck like this or a truck like any of these for that matter, uh, we've got plenty of them in inventory and we've got all the parts to support them. So be sure to check us out online at MidwestMilitaryEquipment.com or give us a call at 636-900-9046. Thanks for watching.